Hi, and welcome to this presentation on Canvas at Imperial Valley College. I am Melody Cronister. I am a member of the Canvas Transition Team, which is a subcommittee of the Distance Education Committee, and I will be walking you through this brief presentation on Canvas. I wanted to start on the Imperial Valley College homepage to show you how to navigate to the Canvas system. You'll go to Faculty and Staff, and then select Canvas from the drop-down menu. And of course, I'm not getting the drop-down menu to show up on our web page, so I am going to take the long way and click on it this way. And here we are. So you will see that there is the branding. You're starting to show Imperial Valley College um, embedded with Canvas. So this is Canvas at IVC. And you're going to put in the same ID and password as you would for the Blackboard CMS. And then click Login. And here we are. This is called the Dashboard. It will show your courses. There are two views. There is the course tiles view, which is what you're seeing now. And then there's the recent activity view, which will show you by activity per course. I personally prefer the tiles view. You can control this view, what courses appear, when you go into your courses list item on the left-hand menu. Here I have the summer courses showing and then the fall IVC course shell, and then a course I'm developing in my sandbox. To change the view, you can click on All Courses, and it will list all of the courses uh, eligible to show. This would be the current semester going forward, whatever has been built in our system. So I have Spring 2016 hidden. Let's say you wanted to turn on Spring 16 to You'll play around with it and figure it out. You can just click the star here and it will highlight and show up. And then when you click on your courses, you're going to see that now show up. See, here it is right here. So at any time, you can modify what is viewed in your tiles by going into the All Courses menu. I want to start with the left-hand menu on the side here. Again, it has been branded to show Imperial Valley College, and we went with a charcoal color scheme. The account settings, you will see your profile. Here you can add a brief uh, profile and then connect other social media sites if desired, like Skype, LinkedIn, etc. And there are settings. But most importantly, I want to point out notifications. Notifications is how you are notified of any activity within Canvas. It will show you what you've set up, your email address. I've added a personal email address, a phone number, and a Twitter account. And then how often you get notified at those locations. So for communications or emails, referred to as conversations here, I want to be notified immediately, so I have marked these boxes. This means that when a student sends a communication or a conversation, I get a message immediately that I received a communication to my Imperial Valley College email address up here, so that I can respond to their communication immediately. If you want to only be notified once a day, that would be this option here, once a week, or not at all. So you set those notification settings yourself, and just know that the default is once a day. So if you want to be notified immediately, you need to make sure you set that up. Also within the account are files. These are all the course files located within Canvas for you. So it will show a drop down of all your courses, and you could open up those folders to see the additional information. I have several that are still empty here, but if we scroll down, I do have files for a few courses and that I could actually dig into from my account page. 
And then finally, there's ePortfolios. Again, this is optional. You can set up an ePortfolio as can students. And there's a lot of um, information available there. We're going to drop down to the dashboard. The dashboard, again, is the screen that we started out on. It is the course tiles. The colors are optional for you. You can change it to whatever color you desire. You just click on this top right hand corner. It, is, it shows the nickname for the course and then you can select a color or using the RGB color map type in the color number and apply whatever color you would like. I went with the same color for summer and then I chose two random colors for the other courses that I'm working on. With courses, again, it's another way to view your list of courses. Again, we covered how to modify that view here. And then with calendar, a neat feature with Canvas and the calendar is that you can actually make changes to when things are due from within this view. So I know I have some assignments set up and due in August. So we're going to give it a second to load here. And there they are, and it's purple, which tells me that it's my CIS web development programming course. And I could literally grab this, drag and drop it to the 25th, and it will change that assignment due date to the 25th on that course. So after you've built all your courses, if you go into this view and realize you've required everything to be due on the same day and you are going to have no life whatsoever on that day, you may decide to move them around accordingly so that you uh, better allocate your time. That is an option for you in this view. Next on the menu on the left is the inbox. This is where the communications or conversations are kept. And again, until you set it up, the conversations are housed in Canvas to and from. So if you want those notifications to also go to a, another email address, you will need to set that up in your account settings. The Commons is an open resource for you. It has a lot of open educational resources that you can import into your course as well as export and share with the community. It's a pretty neat feature and we actually have the Imperial Valley College course shell on the Commons. So I can actually type in here Imperial Valley College and do a search and there it is, Imperial Valley College course shell. So you could actually grab this and import this as well as other content you find that you may feel is useful for your course. So now this is a powerful resource available to you that is all open source information that you can use for your course. It's faculty sharing with faculty. Last but not least is the help menu. There is the search the Canvas guides in the event you want to either read a guide or watch a video on how to do a specific thing in Canvas, there's a vast directory of videos listed that you can choose from. And it's broken down by the type of user, whether you're a student, a faculty member, an administrator, or someone supporting the program. So if we scroll down here, you see under instructors, then you have videos to watch on assignments, calendars, etc. Several options for you in the event you have a question about how to do something. You can also report a problem to Canvas. There's a 24-hour Canvas support hotline that you or students can call. There is a discussion forum called Ask the Community. Here's where you can ask a question or view past conversations on how to do something and then submit a feature idea. This is pretty neat. In the event you are working with Canvas and you find it's not doing something that you think it should, you can suggest that edit to Canvas and it's actually voted on by the community, so other faculty members out there across the nation. And if they have enough support, then that actually makes it into future releases in Canvas. So it's where faculty have a voice immediately to the people that actually make this program to make it the best program possible. Now that we've gone to, through the left-sided menu, I wanted to briefly touch on the right. If we go back to the dashboard here, you just see two options. Start a new course. 
So if you're going to build a course just to play around with it in Sandbox, this would be where you would start. And then there is a View Grades option. Think of this as the gradebook in Blackboard, but from a big picture view. You actually can see a list of all your courses and pick which course you want to see the grade detail to. Again, most of these courses at this point are empty, but it would show you the main, well, this one I have enrollment in, but as far as building in Canvas, you don't see any assignments here. I should have clarified that. But this is the list of, or the grade view, and if there were assignments built, you would see them in columns here. And just like in Blackboard, you can export the data so that you can work with it in another program. Alrighty, now that we have gone through the left hand and right hand menus, I am going to actually show you the Imperial Valley College course show. The Imperial Valley College course shell or container will be made available as an option to faculty. It was developed using a student-centered approach. In addition to this option, you will also be able to import content from Blackboard. I wanted to make sure that that was clear. So with that said, we're going to click on the IVC course shell. And this is basically an empty container that you can then populate with your course information without having to worry about building all the individual pages, discussions, assignments, etc. And instead, start with this and then add your content to save you some time and effort. So here on this particular shell, we start out with the home page that has a link to the course syllabus, course modules, course roadmap, and instructor contact. You can replace this avatar picture with your own and populate this information with your own by clicking the edit button up here in the top right. For downloading the course syllabus, I personally had attached a Word document using the syllabus template as approved by Academic Senate. I used the Word version in the event you wanted to download it, save it, and then add your course information and put it back. Again, we still recommend using PDF as much as possible because of its uh, accessibility features, but Canvas does allow Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, PDF, several formats of documents to be uh, utilized in this program. And since they have this feature to open it up, within the program itself, within Canvas, the student does not need to have Word, Excel, etc. downloaded on their computer in order to view this within the screen. So here is the screen view, and you will see here it is the template from Academic Senate to populate. To close it, you just would click again, Minimize File Preview, and then if you wanted to download it, you would just click the arrow and it would download it. I'm using Chrome, so it puts it down here and parks it for you to save to your computer. I also provided a View Course Syllabus Online link. Again, whatever links you want to use, great. If you don't, delete them. It's really simple to do. The reason why I incorporated an online version, yes, this is another place where you would potentially populate your course syllabus, but the reason why it's here is because then students would be able to see a web version of your syllabus from whatever device they're using. And this is also very accessible since HTML works very well with screen reading devices. So you would know by providing this, that it would be accessible to students that needed to use those services. And again, this is a template, so you would see where you would have to fill in the additional information. Okay, now to, I'm going to skip the modules for a second here and go down to the course roadmap. For those of you faculty that are teaching online, you know that a course roadmap is part of the requirement. That is why this is here. Again, you may choose to use it for, to enhance your face-to-face -face class, or you can delete it. 
but this is what it would look like. It shows the objectives covered each week. Think of it as the last page of your syllabus uh, for some. And then it also provides a link to that week if the student wanted to jump and see the overview in detail for that week. I'm returning to the home page. And then finally, I want to go into the course modules for you. The course modules are listed and viewable according to how you have it set up. And if you have it published, that's what the green cloud means. If you don't want it visible to the students, you just click it to unpublish it. That's why this is gray with an X through it. So if a student was viewing your course or this course, this would not show. It would only show week one. And I'll give you a student view at the end of this breakdown. But I wanted to show you briefly how to edit the settings in the event you want to remove one of these items because you're not going to use it or if you wanted to rename it, for example, resources. To do so, you're just going to click on the settings over here, select edit, and you could change the title here. You could lock it if you want it locked until a certain date. You could add a prerequisite if you want the student to complete something first, like all of week one before seeing week two. Or you could add a specific requirement like complete the discussion of week one in order to view week two. To delete individual items, you would just click on the circle next to any one of these items. And here you can select remove or edit, increase indent, and so on. On the left-hand menu here, I wanted to show you briefly, you'll notice there are some dark options and some light gray options. The dark options are what is visible to the student. The grayed out options are not visible to the student, but still accessible to you as faculty. So for example, the assignments listed in the modules, they're also listed here in order to where you can actually edit them here or within the modules, either way. But I have them numbered and named in a, in a way that will actually show them in chronological order. After that are weekly discussions. And then after the weekly discussions are the quizzes. You can access just the quizzes by, quiz, by clicking the quizzes link on the left. Or you can access the discussions by clicking the discussions link. You notice I have this visible to the students. This is because for my classes, online classes, they are required to continue to participate in the discussions throughout the week. So in the event a student logs in, they've already done their initial post, and they just need to post responses, I want to give, it, uh, give them an option to dive directly into the discussion feed. The pin discussions mean that you want this to show up on top. You can drag and drop to pin them, and they will be pinned. Otherwise, they're sorted down here by recent activity. Let's say you know you don't want to do discussions. You're doing a face-to-face -face class, Web Enhanced, then discussions are most likely not for you. To change the way the, men the menu is set up for the student view, you would just go into Settings. And then you would go into navigation. And here you can drag and drop what you want them to see. So you would just grab your discussions, drop it down here, and they're not going to see it anymore. Once I save this, it will drop it down and make it light gray. But I want them to see it, so I'm going to put it back up here. But just know you have control over what's visible and what's not, and that's done within your settings on the course in question. The last link I wanted to go over in this brief overview was the pages. All the wiki pages or content pages are housed within this link. It starts out with what we've designated as your course homepage. You can, re you can change that designation in your settings. 
to see all of the pages, you're going to click View All Pages, and it will list every wiki page created for this course. So here you see the home page, the roadmap, the syllabus, the welcome, and the overview and read and review for all 16 weeks. So here, any pages you like, you can go in and edit from this point, or you can remove them clicking the circle here. And that's it for the course shell. It is going to be made immediately available on the Commons. As you saw, it is already available, so you can import that at any time by logging into Canvas, going into the Commons, and importing the content. We are also working with IT to see if there's a way that we can import this course into all existing courses so that you can manipulate this shell and make it your own so you have a starting point so you don't have to start from scratch. But just know this will be an option for you. We are just working out the details on how to make it available to you now. Last but not least, I wanted to give you a brief review of what it would look like populated. I have developed this course for the fall using that shell and adding my own content and, and also making it my own. So as you will see here, I added a welcome message and there's an announcements link that takes the students to the announcements that we have posted for the course. I've used the syllabus link, I've incorporated that, built the online version, and I also added a welcome message link. For those of you that's developed uh, online courses, you know that the welcome message or course policies is required. So that's where this is incorporated here. So they can see it right away when they log into the course. And then I changed the avatar picture to my own. And then I added my own uh, instructor information. I kept the same menu set up here. And I'm going to go into modules to show you what that would look like but I want to show you from a student view. So to give you the student view, I'm going to go down to settings here. And I'm going to click on student view. So now we are looking at this course as if we were a student. So immediately you notice that the menu is short, it's brief, it's simple. Everything that was grayed out is invisible to them. They just see home, announcements, modules, discussions, and grades. If we go into the modules, now remember when you saw the template or the shell, you saw several weeks. Those, because they weren't published, are not visible to the student. The student only sees the introduction and week one. Going into the first file of week one, the first wiki page, I have the overview for the week. I tell them to review the syllabus. I made it a link so it takes them directly to the syllabus. Tell them to post any questions to the Q&A board, a link to the board. Participate in week one discussion, a link to the discussion, assignment, same thing, a link, and the quiz, a link. They don't have to reach it by clicking on that link, that's just an option to them. They can also scroll down here and work their way through the module one page at a time. I provide the reading assignment, and with every weekly summary page, I provide a link to the course roadmap so they can see how the course will flow overall in the event they're interested. The second wiki page is the read and review. Here's where you could incorporate your lecture or a PowerPoint presentation or even a video. There are several features you can add to these pages. Here it's a hybrid course, so I am indicating my lecture is on campus and that they need to be present in order to review and hear that lecture. I then provide the files needed to complete the assignments for the course for the week. Then I tell them to click Next to complete the following items. Here is what an assignment would look like. It tells them the due date you've established up here, the points value, 
how they will be submitting it, and when it is available until, and they submit by pressing the button up here. It gives the description, and then I've attached a rubric. The rubrics in Canvas are great. You can actually not only build them, but you can grade by them by checking a box. You can grade using the rubric. So I would actually, if I was grading a submission, this would appear and I would click, they turned it in on time, they covered everything, and they completed all the steps correctly. And by clicking those three boxes, it would assign the total value, 20 points. And then I would add any feedback and hit submit. That is an option available to you. You don't have to use the rubric, nor do you have to grade with the rubric, but just know that that option is there. Then the student clicks next to view the discussion. Here I have a detailed discussion topic that I am sharing with them, and I'm asking them to respond or to reply and respond to two other students. They can subscribe, and they can, um, when you reply, the way you've built the discussion, you could have them post first before they see replies, or you could have them see everything uh, and then reply that way. That's up to you, and those are within the settings. The last section of this module is week one homework review quiz. I wanted to show you briefly what the quiz would look like. Just like with Blackboard, you set up number of attempts, how much time they have, how the questions will be viewed. So I have them viewing them all at once so they can scroll down, complete the quiz, and once they have completed the quiz, they would submit, and it says, are you sure? Sure. And it will tell the students how much time it took, what their score was, what court score it kept. I've made three temps, which means I got zero on this quiz. <laughs> and it will tell them down here the number of attempts and what the last, what the final score is. So better luck next time. And that's it for the modules. As far as a student view of grades, it will yell at me if I click on this and tell me, oh, I apologize, that doesn't yell at me. It actually will show me the student view because I'm within the course, my apologies. This is what a student will see if they look at the grades for their test. And it will list every assignment you've built in your course, what the total value is, and then if they scroll all the way down, it shows the total value for assignments, discussions, and quizzes. Since uh, I'm still in, progress, or still in process of building the entire course, you see that there are some assignments still reflecting zero. That's because I still need to build the content. It does take course um, publisher content, for example, test banks. That is still an option in Canvas. It is also compatible with Blackboard files. You can export your Blackboard course and import it into Canvas. Now, yes, the menu options are different, so it, it's going to stick it where it best aligns. So there is still going to be some work on your end as far as making sure it's ending up where you want it to go. But it will take the content, and you will just have to do minimal cleanup to ensure that all that content is where you want it. I'm going to leave the student view. I return to the home page. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, we've worked really hard, the Canvas transition team. Please take a the time to fill out the survey. Let us know your questions. I know you have them. And please take a look at the training schedule published and sign up for those trainings so that we can go more in depth on each one of the items that I've briefly covered so that you can absorb all that Canvas has to offer. We look forward to working with you, and thank you for taking the time to watch this video.